Hi, today we have with us Pranjali and she has done her master's from US and uh, she is in US. I mean, currently she is working in US and she has come to India on a vacation and she is working as data scientist. Okay. And she has a lot of information to share. And if you want to interact with her, I'm giving you her LinkedIn account in the description. You could interact with her to ask more questions. Let's begin the show. So, hi Pranjali. Hello. <laughs> yeah. So... Shall we start with your journey from B.Tech? Oh yeah, sure. That sounds good. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So you can tell tell us uh, um, where you have done your B.Tech and then um, why you chose to do Masters. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, hello everyone. I'm Pranjali um, and I'm currently working as a data scientist at Autodesk. Uh, I'm based in Seattle, Washington. I'm working in the data products and insights team. I completed my Masters in USA. From, and I completed my master's in CS uh, from University of Massachusetts Amherst in the field of uh, concentration of data science. So, yeah, I think uh, right now I'm based in Seattle and I have been working for around one and a half to two, two years. So, yeah, I think. <laughs> yeah, okay. So, Pranjali, why did you choose to do master's? And the next question is, why didn't you do it in India? Why did you do it in U.S.? Okay, um, so I think uh, I can just start from my undergrad. So um, obviously there was a lot of uh, uh, hype about data science and machine learning when I was doing my undergrad. And I tr it's not like I did not explore other fields. I tried doing different projects in Android app development. I also tried robotics. So And I also tried data science as well. And the most intrigued I was and the most beneficial and the most interesting, which I feel was basically working in data science field so that's when i was like okay let me start with interning at companies as a data science intern or doing research projects with a lot of different professors in this field so that's when i think my interest basically began in the field of data science and i was like okay i don't think just four years of my undergrad experience in data science would get me or land me the dream job that i want in data science so I was like, okay, let me um, try to apply for masters in USA. Um, I was definitely, uh, I definitely had an option to do my masters, I think, in India. But I looked at the pros and cons of what to, how to do masters in USA and how to do masters in India, and I felt that doing masters in USA would give me a lot of opportunities because there are a lot of, I would say. Job opportunities, firstly. Secondly, I felt the research opportunities and the kind of interest that I had. I was mostly interested in the field of national language processing. And I saw that there were lots of publications and research projects done in the US when compared to India. I would definitely say that India is a great place to kind of um, do your research projects and do your master's. But I just felt that master's in USA outweighed the pros of doing masters instead of in India. Okay, okay. So Pranjali, have you done any internships in your BTEC? And please let us know how to get internships because many students want to get internships. Yeah, I could definitely talk about it a little bit. So I was uh, definitely unsure about how do I get started? How do I reach out to people? How do I land internships in the field of data science? So I think everybody has heard about LinkedIn. And I think I have used and leveraged LinkedIn as a platform to the most to uh, basically you know, uh, get all the opportunities in the data science field. So I think the first thing that I started was basically I started with doing research projects within your own university. So you can reach out to a lot of professors. You can reach out to PhD scholars. I feel a lot of professors are kind of busy. It's a little difficult for them to kind of reply to your emails. So just reach out to the PhD scholars that are working under those professors because they always need your help. So definitely reach out uh, to the PhD scholars for working under research projects. So that's one thing that I did um, to get more experience in the data science domain. Second thing, which I, after you basically improve your resume, do a lot of courses. The first course that I usually recommend uh, would be I think Machine Learning by Andrew Ng. Mm -hmm. It's a very famous course and I'm sure everybody has done it. 
so definitely do it it has been very helpful to me so after doing a lot of courses and doing a few research projects i leveraged linkedin by cold messaging a lot of people and i basically made a list of all the all the companies that i wanted to apply to all the startups that are looking for opportunities and reach out the uh, reach out to them to uh, on linkedin just uh, saying that hey i'm pranjali these are my skill sets so i'm looking for an opportunity to be great if you know you could look at my resume and we could basically mm-hmm. take the conversation okay. so this is how i basically got my internships okay that's great yeah. uh-huh. okay yeah. so pranjali what is the process uh, or what is the preparation that you have done to apply for masters because you have done masters in a great university so it might have taken a lot of effort mm-hmm. so what is the process that you have followed the entire preparation process yeah i think um so yeah just to give a background i have done my masters in computer science with a data science concentration from university of massachusetts amherst and to say i directly went from my undergrad after completing my undergrad for my masters so i literally did not have any experience job experience is what i would say so coming to preparation um so like i said do a lot of internships do a lot of research projects and just don't do it for the sake of building your resume uh, also do it um, so that you get better in what you're doing you understand what data science is and when somebody asks you or like you know just asks you to explain what data science is you should be able to be like be, give basic explanation to them so i would definitely say do a lot of research projects reach out to people ha- build a network and do a few internships that's something which definitely helped me to build my profile for masters in computer science is what i would say secondly i think there are a lot of resources that you can uh, check like i wanted to do my masters in computer science where the university was good in natural language processing so do your research make sure you list out all the universities which you think are doing good work in the domain that you are interested in okay thank you so pranjali tell me what courses you did in uh, masters and tell me your experience uh, doing ms abroad like in us how is your experience doing masters you have studied in india then you have studied in us mm-hmm. what is the difference that you found out and uh, yeah you you, t- you share your experience please yeah sure um so i think i started my masters in um january 2021 i was actually i actually applied for a fall batch but because covid happened in 2020 uh-huh. um i had to defer my admission so i joined for masters in spring semester so i think the kind of courses that i took uh, during my masters you are allowed to take around 10 courses you can take more courses obviously uh, i took 10 courses during my entire masters program is what i would say so the kind of courses that i took was basically a mixture of systems for data science um statistics machine learning reinforcement learning and one of the course that was really impressive at university of massachusetts amherst which was one of my favorite courses mm. is what i would say um it is called um ds696 so in that basically what happens is you fill a form and you fill your profile and what your interests are and they basically the university basically matches you with an industrial mentor so you get to work with mentors from google from microsoft from autodesk from a different i actually worked with bloomberg bloomberg is one of the uh, one of the most uh, known financial services company if you actually look at it and i worked as on a research project um mm. in natural language processing with bloomberg so it was around 4 to 5 months but i got industrial mentorship and we also tried to publish a paper so i think it it was a really good and interesting so you published experience. a paper so i wasn't able to publish a paper mm-hmm. it's still in review is what i would say okay. but i would definitely recommend people to uh, you know if they are going to umass or they are ha- going for masters definitely do research under the professors or definitely apply for these programs which kind of help you you know uh, work with a lot of industrial mentors so that definitely was a plus one because i already i could add that in resume that i worked with somebody at the bloomberg okay so yeah that's great yeah so pranjali um i think students are allowed to do part time job while doing masters in us mm-hmm. right so it is legal 
Now, what kind of part-time jobs are available for students and can you elaborate on that? Oh yeah, sure. Um, so there's something called TA ship. It's teaching assistantship and there's something called GA ship as well. Um, and I actually worked as a career developer. Um, I know a lot of people have not heard about this, but these are university uh, part-time jobs that are available. There are so many jobs that are available within the university that you can apply for. Uh, there's always a, a job portal available for every university. So I worked as a career developer. Um, I used to work around 10 hours a week or something, mm. or you could actually uh, 10 to 20 hours a week. And you get around 15 to $30 per hour which takes care of your living expenses. And I feel this is one of the best opportunities or best way to kind of fund your own uh, education by doing part-time job within the university. And when talking about TA ship, I think TA ship and GA ship it very de depends on the university that you're actually studying in. But um, if you apply for TA ship, there's a lot of tuition fee waivers that the university provides you. It's around 30 to 40% of tuition fee waiver. So maybe if a semester your tuition fee is $20,000, you get around maybe six dollars $7,000 fee waiver. And there are a lot of universities which provide you with entire scholarship, like complete scholarship. You don't have to pay anything from your pocket. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's great. So Pranjali, how did you become a data scientist? Can you explain the process? Yeah, sure. Um, so I think um, my main motive to do masters was to get more accustomed and get more, um, I think, domain knowledge. And this masters in USA definitely has helped me. And I did my masters in USA with a field concentration in data science. So I took a lot of data science courses, what I would say. So I would just explain what are the main elements of data science interviews or data scientists should basically know. So first is definitely case study analysis. Like a data scientist should know that, like let us consider some matrix has gone down or some user retention has gone down. How do you base, how do you investigate it? So case study analysis is very important given a situation, how you, uh, how you find a solution for that problem and what your approach is. So that is one element of being a data scientist. Second is the kind of courses that you need to take is statistics, uh, machine learning, and probability. Um, you can also take business analytics as optional course if you want to. But these are the three to four courses which are really rigorously asked during the interviews. So I would suggest everyone to be really um, proficient in statistics, probability, and machine learning. Third would be coding, obviously. I think every software engineer, every data scientist, data analyst, any role in tech, everybody should know how to code because data scientists is mostly 60 to 70 percent of coding, 30 to 40 percent presenting your results and also talking to a lot of stakeholders. So that is fourth element. And fifth, I think every job, not even in the tech field, but in every field is behavioral, how you present yourself, how you talk. So these are, I think, the four to five elements which a data scientist should basically know. Um, so yeah, I think uh, I work during my master's to upskill in all these domains is what I would say. And coming to how did I land my data scientist job, the first thing that I would say is I applied for a lot of data science interviews. So I wanted to firstly start with an internship. So I was like, okay, let me apply for a lot of data science internships. I landed uh, as a data scientist intern in Autodesk. I worked there for five months and obviously a lot of interns, a lot of companies when you're interning there, they look for uh, full-time employees if you are actually a good performer, depending on what you have delivered. So yeah, I think uh, my manager liked my work and, and we had a performance review and we basically talked about getting my internship converted to a full-time offer and that's how I think I la landed my data scientist okay. job. So Pranjali, what are your day-to-day -day activities as a data scientist? Yeah, I think um, it's very project-based is what I would say. As a data scientist, uh, depending on different kinds of projects, uh, my roles basically vary. The first thing that I would definitely say is performing a lot of statistical tests. That's why I was basically, you know, giving an emphasis on knowing statistics and probability because that's 
one of the major things that you need to know when you are a data scientist. So a lot of st statistical analysis, performing A-B testing, hypothe uh, hypothesis testing, if you're aware of what that is. Um, secondly, I think obviously coding, trying to basically get a data set and a lot of data pre-processing, data cleaning, building a lot of machine learning models and testing those machine learning models, deploying those models and creating a product from scratch is what I would say is another um, role that I play as. Third is after you're done launching a product. Is the product working? Is the product actually getting a lot of customers, getting a lot of users? So you to perform a lot of statistical tests on that as well. Fourth would be conveying your product to your stakeholders just to, you know, gain marketing and a couple of other things. But yeah, I think data scientist is basically uh, my coding would be around 70% and the rest of it would be just presenting my results and talking to the stakeholders, which is 30%. Okay, got it. So Pranjali, how is work culture different from India? <laughs> Um, so I think um, since a lot of my friends are actually working in India and I definitely have conversations with them and I also have interned in India and I've also interned uh, in the US and I'm currently working as a full time um, employee in the US. I would say that the work culture is definitely better when compared to India because I basically start with my work at around 10 and uh, get done with my work at around 4.35 p.m. It's obviously um, role dependent and role based, but I feel uh, it's uh, your work and your timings are taken very seriously and very, um, and they respect your schedule is what I would say. So I think this is something uh, different from what we see in the US because a lot of my friends keep talking about how they have to work overnight and how they have to work after 5 p.m. as well. So I think that uh, is pretty different from what I see in the U.S. Yeah. Okay. So Pranjali, what is the message that you want to give to, the, give to our students? Yeah, I think um, most importantly, um, when I was an undergrad, I just felt you need a lot of experience, you need a lot of job experience, you need a lot of research projects, you need a lot of internships to basically land a good job or land a good job in data science field, in top companies. But I would just advise to students that build your profile and um, do good internships and be good at the kind of knowledge that you have and also build your network. I emphasize on this because I feel most of my uh, people in the network have helped me to get where I am I'm at right now. So I would definitely uh, just suggest uh, work hard and uh, build your profile, upskill yourself, do a lot of uh, do a lot of courses, what I would say. And yeah, I think that's pretty much it. And I would also uh, be doing a lot of videos on the channel. In, so if you need any kind of advice uh, in the field of data science, you can definitely reach out to me on LinkedIn as well. Yeah, so please comment. Uh, what do you want to know from Pranjali? What kind of videos you want to see? She will definitely make a lot of videos. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah.